Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Living Wholehearted Podcast. We are Jeff and Tara Matson, a husband and wife team who is shrinking the integrity gap in our own lives and helping others do the same. I'm a leadership and organizational development coach, and Tara is a licensed marriage and family therapist. We believe that if you have a following, you are a leader and how you lead matters. Whether you are leading in the home, work, or community, we are bringing you biblical, clinical, and relational wisdom to help you in every relationship that matters most to you. None of us do this perfectly, but we are leaning into the reality of our humanity and profound wisdom of grace. but fall will be here soon. I know some of us have just started summer over here in the Pacific Northwest, so don't cringe when I say this. But as you start thinking about back to school, I want to encourage you to think about how you can be praying for your kids this next school year. We are parenting in a world that feels unsteady and confusing. Our kids are facing issues that we have never thought of before, um, especially those of us who are older and what we grew up with. While our ever-changing world wants to mark our kids' childhood with these things, God wants to mark them with a faith that transforms their lives from the inside out. So whether you're feeling excited or anxious about this upcoming school year, maybe your kids are going into middle school and you've got those normal anxieties, or maybe heading into kindergarten, wherever they're at, the highs and lows this year, meet it with prayer. The Christian Parenting 2023-2024 prayer journal is now available. So Marked by Prayer is a prayer journal for Christian parenting that was created just for you. This journal will guide you in praying for your kids every week of the school year. Each week presents a new topic to journal about. Topics include things like generosity and self-discipline, salvation, godly friendships, and more. So join us as we pray for our kids and that they would be marked by God. Visit cp.org. Visit cpgive.org to request your school year prayer journal, Marked by Prayer. Again, that's cpgive.org. Request your copy of Marked by Prayer today. You can also listen to Part in the Mess podcast each Monday to listen to your guided prayer and reflections that follow the journal. It's a hand-in-hand combination, and we are so grateful to partner with Christian Parenting. It's your prayer journal today. Many of you may know that we have a wonderful partnership with Christian Parenting, and we believe that if you have a following, you are a leader. So our audience spans from CEOs and pastors to parents trying to lead well in the home. That's why we link arms with Christian Parenting, creating resources like our Dear Matson's Parenting Series, answering real real questions from real parents like you, and helping moms raise confident daughter courses. CP also sponsors this very podcast and produces it each week. So today we're going to talk about leadership in our, with our kids with one of our partners in crime, Steph Thurling. Well, Steph is executive director of Christian Parenting and host of the Christian Parenting Podcast. And she has her master's in youth, family, and culture from Fuller Theological Seminary, has a background in youth and children's ministries. Uh, she's a co-author of Raising Prayerful Kids, a book that shares easy, life-giving, and fun ways to teach kids to pray. She loves helping families grow closer to each other and to God through meaningful experiences and conversations. Steph is a frequent speaker at churches and moms groups and is known for her relatable stories, practical ideas, and gentle encouragement. She and her husband and family live in Minnesota, and they are raising, uh, um, she describes three amazing and hilarious kids. And so, Steph, welcome to the podcast today. Hello. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. We love it. This is such a fun conversation to have with someone we know and appreciate. So just start by telling us a little bit about your story and how that story is informing what you're doing today. Yeah. So like Jeff said, I um, am married to Trevor and we have three kids, Calvin, Griffin, and Harriet, and we live in Minnesota. Um, But before I became a mom, before we had our family, I had a calling to youth ministry. And in college, I started pursuing a career in youth ministry. And so from college until my oldest son was one, I worked with middle school and high school 
kids primarily in churches and congregational ministry. And I really loved it. I loved working with the kids. But what was really interesting about it was that towards the end of my time, I really started being drawn to the parents of these kids. And the more I got to know them, the more they would start coming to me with questions. They would end up sitting in my office talking about their teenagers. And I was like, early 20s. I had no kids. I'm like, I can't give you parenting advice, but I can talk you through what we're doing in youth ministry and some of their research. And I just loved talking with them and getting to know them. And I didn't realize that that was really starting a vocation towards parent ministry. Um, So I stepped away from congregational youth ministry when I had my oldest child. And as more and more of my friends became parents, they started coming to me with questions about how to raise their kids in the faith, like how to bring the Bible stories that they were learning at church and Sunday school, how to bring them home, how to answer questions, how to pray with them, like all of these different things my my friends were asking me. And I started looking for resources. I didn't find a ton for specifically praying with your kids. Um, I had One friend specifically kind of like corner me at church and was like, I don't know how to pray with my daughter. And she's asking me. And so I was looking for a book to give her and I couldn't find one. And I was praying about it. And I really felt God put on my heart to minister to parents and teach them how to pray with their kids. So I invited my friend, Sarah Holmstrom into this. And together we started our ministry, Raising Prayerful Kids. And our passion for parent ministry just grew and grew. And so I've been doing that for a little over five years. And through that ministry and my book, Raising Prayerful Kids, I got um, connected with Christian Parenting. And so now I'm the executive director here and get to do my podcast and pour into parents through this ministry. Mm, I love it. Isn't it fun how in our journeys, we never exactly know fully where we're heading, but there's these times and places and experiences when we look back in our timelines and we can go, God's preparing me. And you can see a spark happen when you were talking to the parents, Mm -hmm. there was something there that was drawing to your heart. Um, And then God connects the dots, not always maybe on our timing. um, And, but he's been expanding your audience uh, to parents um, broader all over the world through Christian parenting. So we're excited to hear more. Yeah. So, I mean, being in the saddle as a parent, I mean, and you got street credibility here, you're raising three kiddos here and uh, <laughs> you, you and your husband um, and having that background in youth ministry, doing what you're doing now at Christian Parenting. Talk to our audience a bit about some of those issues, the challenges that the parents are wrestling with um, as they try to equip their uh, sons and daughters uh, to have a strong faith in such a broken world. Yeah, I think, I mean, there are so many things I could say right now. I've, I'm asked this question a lot, and I think there are two things that I am seeing the most, and that would be um, finding balance and then school and church decisions. So I think when it comes to finding balance in parenting, so many people are saying, like, how much is too much? Like, how, what for sports? What, what do we do for sports? Do we like go all in and do all the travel and club sports or we do, do we take it easy? You know, how much time do we invest or different activities like that technology? Like, what do we do with technology? I know you guys cover that all the time for us at Christian Parenting, but everyone has questions about the balance of technology because our kids need to learn it, but how much do we give them? You know, like all of those things are really, really hard. And One of the interesting things that I hear people really kind of struggling with when it comes to balance is also a faith balance. You know, I feel a lot of parents are asking, am I pushing faith too hard? Is my kids going to grow up and feel like they're too isolated or too sheltered? Are they going to rebel from the faith because it's what I taught at home? So even I'm seeing parents struggle to find that balance. Um, and I think that's really real. And I like to say that because if you're feeling that way as a parent, you're not alone. Like there are many people who feel that way. And I think that kind of ties into a school and church decision. You know, I think in the past few years, we've had a lot of parents who wrestle with, do I send my kids to a private school, a Christian school, a public school, or a home school? Like those are big choices in every family. It's going to be different for each family. Um, do you know, do I push going to youth group? If my kids don't want to go or how do I make them want to go to church? Those things feel so big and so important. But the reality is that those things, while they are really important, research shows 
that the biggest influencer in a child's faith is not church or school, it's home. And so those decisions are really big and they are really important, but what happens at home is so much more important. Okay, so let's answer some of those questions, Steph, because, and, and we'll just solve all the world problems right here <laughs> between the three of us. Um, but you're normalizing. If a parent's struggling and saying, okay, I can't balance it all. Like, I, my kid's really good at the sport. Are they good at 10 sports? Um, do we go all out? <laughs> we've also got church. We've also got um, music. We've got other, we want time just to be as a family. What are some of the principles that you and your family live by and then what you teach and, and preach to other parents about that balance from tech to church home to sports and all the activities? Yeah, and I think that depends so much on each family's situation, right? Because if you have one child, you're going to be able to make different decisions for that kid and their level of participation and activities than if you have five. Because there's only probably two parents in a household, maybe one parent in a household, you know? So you have to be able to manage that as parents. Finances play into that a lot too. So I think that the biggest thing that Trevor and I have decided is that we have to be on the same page. And when we're making a decision about whether or not our son, our oldest was going to try out for the travel teams, we really got together and said, is this what we want as a family? And yeah, maybe we'll take Calvin's, our oldest, maybe we'll take his opinion into consideration. But at the end of the day, we're not going to just do what he wants to do. Trevor and I need to come together and make sure that it's going to be right for the whole of our family. We're on the same page and then we can make that decision together. So I think for so many things in parenting and marriage, just being on the same page is just the best thing that you can do, which is not always easy because sometimes we're not on the same page and we have to like really figure it out. Yeah. Well, oh, good. I know we're both jumping on that <laughs> real quick, but that's probably the biggest tension, right? For parents is because it comes a lot from our family values of ourselves. So we have to know yeah. what of our own growing up years, some of it's our woundings, right? Like mm-hmm. we didn't get this. I didn't get a chance to be on the travel team. So my kids are going to have a chance, right? Or we have to be aware of what is influencing our decisions from our past so that we can clear out and be fully present for what's best for our current family and stewarding our children and what God has called for them versus trying to make up for our own childhoods, which is, that's the counselor in me. But. <laughs> I love the way that you guys, you know, uh, you talk, include your kids in that process. I mean, they're not maybe the decision makers, but uh, the reality is, is, is that in preparing kids for real life, I mean, uh, what happens in the family system definitely impacts them and they impact the family system. And that's real life training for anything outside the home one day when they're launched. It's that understanding that uh, their voice is important and that it's valuable and how to use it, and how to check it uh, mm-hmm. behind those that are making the decision authority. And just, that's a beautiful example of turning towards one another in that way. We, we're trying to do that too. And it is tricky, but uh, that has served, served us well as we're in the thick of it as well now with two teenagers. Yeah, and our kids yeah. don't always understand the big pictures that you and Trevor are thinking about and looking out and holding the entire family, right? It's kind of like how God, when he says no to us, sometimes he's holding a bigger picture that we don't always are privy to. So that can be hard for our kids, but you're, you're trying to steward the time, the resources, and each child mm-hmm. um, and their gifting. So talk yeah. a little bit, a little bit more under the hood, Steph. You know, what are some of the things that you wish someone told you maybe was mentoring you in the parenting when you look back and you go, it would have been helpful for me to know this ahead of time as I'm in the thick of it with my own kids and then helping all these other parents out there. I could say so many things because I feel like I entered into motherhood really afraid, like very afraid. I was relatively young. We had moved back from Minnesota um, to Minnesota from California, not to like, we, I, we, we were pregnant maybe a year, year and a half later. So we hadn't really found a solid community. Um, and I felt very alone. And so I just didn't really know anyone who was a parent. I just was very, very scary. I, I mean, I laugh now because Trevor and I literally didn't put Calvin down for three days. Like we took three hour shifts all through the night holding him. And my mom finally came over and was like, you have to put him down. And I was like, I don't, I like, I don't know how. <laughs> like, yeah, I just didn't know yeah. how to let yeah. him go because I was so terrified. And I think I just focused on so many of the little things because of that fear. I parented out of just like, I felt out of control, maybe. I felt isolated. Me, I don't know what I was feeling, but 
I parented out of those feelings. And that made me stress about meeting every milestone or, you know, feeding everyone the right foods, which is hilarious because now I have two very, very picky eaters. Um, you know, like I wanted to make sure I was doing all the right things, which is good, but it's just not good to stress about them. And I wish someone had just said, calm down and give yourself some grace because the most important thing that there ever can be is not meeting every single milestone for so many reasons, of course, or, you know, getting everything right. It's that you love your kids in a way that points them to Jesus. And I still don't have it figured out. I have a long way to go in my parenting journey. Um, I'm just getting into the tween years. So I am not an expert by any means, but I've talked with a lot of people. And on my podcast, I always ask my guests when I start, I say, what is one thing that you want every parent to know? And what has been really interesting is that over and over again, people say some variation of like, God's grace is enough and it's for you. And that is so true. I just, you know, I can't be a perfect parent, but I can point my kids to a perfect parent that is God. And I can be confident and not afraid in my parenting because God is with me in every parenting moment. And in all of my moments of failures, like he fills in the gaps there. And I wish I had had that bigger picture instead of being so afraid. Oh, I so appreciate that. In fact, one of my most common prayers over my girls and our own parenting is uh, 1 Corinthians, Lord, may your power be made perfect in my weakness, Mm. you know, in all the gaps and the cracks and the imperfections and the mess ups that he would use those, right? And he's using them for something in them, in my my girls, whether it's putting them to that. Yeah, I need God more than I need my mom and dad. (laughs) They'll (laughs) fail me. Or for them to see some of the imperfections and the struggles of living life as a follower of Jesus in our humanity. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm just like, use it, use it, use it anytime we mess up or we feel like we can't do it. So I love well, that. Well, I think it's um, so good for our par- our kids to see our imperfections and yeah. us turn to Jesus because I think it's really hard if you all of a sudden get to adulthood and you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> my parents aren't perfect. You yeah. know, like that'll throw you off a lot. It does. So I think it's good. <laughs> I'm sure you see it all the time. Well, I was going to say, that's actually one of the f- big no-nos for us Christians is um, to not let our see- kids see what mm-hmm. arguments yeah. and conflict and uh, the stress of finances. And, you know, obviously we don't want to burden our kids with that, right, Steph? But at the same time, they need to see how we are on our knees and we're processing yep. through our big emotions just like they need to. And that helps them prepare for adulthood, which is heavy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. okay. So speaking of prayer. Yeah, you you got a passion <laughs> for it. A, I do. <laughs> uh, and it's going to be fun to hear a little bit more about this, but how, how does prayer, sh- how did prayer really shape how you parent? I mean, I think you, in some respects, we're talking about how you had a lot of fear at the beginning and so many parents mm-hmm. do. We we had that. Uh, and there was fears that were there. Every parent does, I think, in some respects. But what other ways did you integrate prayer into your own parenting to combat and to equip yourself, uh, to equip your kids, to partner with your husband in that way and others in your community? What advice would you give parents as you teach uh, and speak uh, about the importance of integrating prayer um, with your little people? Yeah. Yeah. So Sarah and I, when we talk about our ministry, Raising Prayerful Kids, we say this all the time, but we thought in our little hearts that we were just starting a ministry and we were going to teach some of our friends and maybe some other people if we could ever get a book published. Like we were going to teach people how to pray with their kids. How to empower their own kids to pray. And we're like, this is great. This is a great little mission. But we had absolutely no idea how much running this ministry and being intentional with prayer for us and for our kids would completely change our families. Um, by making prayer such an important part of our family rhythm, it's just become a lifestyle for us. Like it is so ingrained in who we are as a family. And I think prayer has changed me a lot as a mom because I'm a, I'm a patient person. I have a lot of patience, but I will say that when that patience goes, it goes. <laughs> like, <laughs> when my fuse is done, it is done. She's done. And my, oh yeah, my kids are the same. So okay. there's a lot of that in our house. So doing things like practicing a breath prayer, which is something I started teaching my kids when they were really little, because I have a fuse, I have some big temper tantrums. So doing a thing like it, taking a deep breath in, 
and exhaling, I say, Lord, give me peace. And I do this when I'm upset with my kids or upset with the situation or whenever I need a little extra peace. And then I'm able to use that breathing, use that prayer, calm my body down and respond to my kids instead of react to my kids. And they see this like time and time again, me doing it. Sometimes they call me out and tell me I need to. <laughs> Breathe, <laughs> you know? Breathing prayer, mom. <laughs> mom. <laughs> I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> but they see me, instead of reacting to them and being upset, they see me turning to Jesus. And then they do it themselves too. And they've taught their friends to do it. It's just become part of our life that I've been able to model for them. And I've seen their prayer life grow so much. You know, we started with really simple prayers. We would play the grateful game together, which is just taking turns saying, thank you, God, for whatever, like Pokemon, silly little things when they were Mm -hmm. tiny, tiny. And we just did small prayers. And I've, we practiced the Lord's prayer. I had a one, my middle child, Griffin, he was so stubborn. He did not want to pray in literally any single way, except for the Lord's prayer. And so we did that together every night. We still do it. He actually, I put him to bed last night, did the Lord's prayer with him, but he forgot that we had done it. So he came sneaking in like an hour later and he was like, mom, our father. It's like, well, honey, we already did that, but we can do it again. You know? So we started (laughs) with these little prayers. And now as they've grown, they lead prayers at school and they're eager to pray as a family and they're confident to pray out loud, which is a gift that I think a lot of adults aren't confident confident praying out loud. So I think they've been given this gift of prayer, but we started really small. And so I never want parents to think that this happened by accident, that my kids are kids who rely and love prayer because they just happen to be. It's because we started really tiny little habits, really intentional, found what worked for them and just made it part of our lifestyle. So we just started really small and Parents can do that too. It's just like teaching our kids to do anything. You know, we don't teach them how to read chapter books. We teach them the ABCs. And the same can go for prayer. Yeah. And so you're speaking about some parents who feel really uncomfortable praying out loud. And so you're normalizing that, that that, Mm -hmm. if you haven't practiced that or that hasn't been a part of your church tradition, there's a lot of traditions that are more private and that's something Mm -hmm. you do on your own and not in corporate community. So knowing how to pass that on to your kids So speak to that parent, particularly when starting small. I love it. You gave a couple examples, like a breath prayer, um, a gratitude game of of thanking the Lord for things, um, small things and big things. Maybe give a couple more smaller things for that parent who's like, I don't don't feel comfortable doing it out loud, but I want my kids to learn and I want to grow. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of examples in our book. Our book actually goes, we have three different categories of prayer. So it's prayer games, focused prayers, and contemplative prayers. And the reason we do that is because we want people, no matter where they are in their faith journey or prayer journal journey, they can find something that they feel comfortable with because you have to grow in comfort and prayer. Prayer is really, really vulnerable. So that is totally normal. Um, one thing that we love to do in our family is it's called the prayer of examine. And there's a lot of ways you can do a prayer of examine as an adult, as someone who is a little um, further along in their prayer journey. But it's basically the concept of a prayer of examine is to reflect on your day, see how you were feeling throughout your day, and then reflect on how God was in all of those moments. And then you pray over all of that. That's a lot for kids. But in our family, we basically turned it into highs and lows. So at dinner, we say, what was the best part of your day? What was the worst part of your day? And then we say, how did you see God today? And we started this when they were very, very little. And at first they had a really hard time with the, how did you see God today question? Cause that's very abstract. Yeah. So that was a lot of times it was like the same as their best part of their day. But we just kind of modeled how we saw God. You know, we would just say like, if they were treating each other really kindly, be like, wow, I really see God in the way you're treating your sibling. And so we, we go through those every night. Um, my kids are the ones to lead that now because they really like doing it. If you come to dinner at our house, I tell people, I'm like, my kids will ask you how you saw God today. So That's cool. just be I ready. Love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then you just pray over those things and just say, thank you, God, for being with us in every day. And we like, I like that activity because it takes some of the pressure off because it's more conversational than this idea of an eloquent, long, perfectly worded prayer. Cause that's not what prayer has to be. Mm. 
I love it. It's so great. And you're taking, I think you're even teaching parents some of, again, the wide variety of ways mm-hmm. that we can pray. Sometimes we get in our rote, whatever we know. And uh, so there's there's a beautiful array in your book. So where can people find your book, uh, Steph, before we move over to the ministry side? But this resource sounds like a beautiful one for parents. Thank you. Um, anywhere books are sold, you can find it. Yeah. Okay. So Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the places. All right. This is in the name of the book is? Raising Prayerful Kids. Raising Prayerful Kids. And so anywhere by Steph Thurling, and we'll make sure that's in the show notes so that you can have access. I can imagine that parents are like, ooh, I want to grab that right away. But even (laughs) if you don't grab the book, there's a couple of things you can start with even today with some of Steph's examples. Um, Well, as we talk a little bit about Christian parenting, I'm just mindful of the fact that the tagline is, I mean, speaking to exactly the heartbeat behind everything that you've shared thus far, right? It's a give that to us about perfectly imperfect (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we are all about perfectly imperfect parenting at Christian Parenting. That is one of the things that made me just fall in love with this ministry um, and why I love working with this ministry. So we, our mission at Christian Parenting is to equip parents to confidently raise their kids to know and love Jesus. And we provide digital resources on a variety of platforms. We have articles like a blog um, and a newsletter. We have YouTube, like Dear Matson's, um, our annual event, podcasts like this one. We have our digital courses, also by Tara. <laughs> you hit all of our different <laughs> platforms. Like, Hello again. <laughs> um, so however it is that parents consume their content, you know, some people like to read an article on their phone. Some people like a podcast. How We just want to reach as many parents as possible on as many platforms as possible. And our heart is really that you don't have to be a perfect parent to parent well. You know, like only, like I said, only God's the perfect parent, but we can take the example that Christ gives us Mm -hmm. and the resources that we have and we can disciple our kids at home because life is busy, but in that busyness, you can find growth and connection. And we really believe that. Mm -hmm. So true. And, you know, there's a, I know that a large portion of the audience uh, at Christian and the, of the reach of Christian parenting are Christian parents. But I know that there are people that are engaging and exploring in the Christian parenting network, if you will. And, um, mm-hmm. and also even in our podcast, the Living Heart podcast and the resources that we, that we do um, that don't know uh, anything about how to raise kids in a Christian perspective, but they've seen their, they have high values and they are the, every parent that actually cares about their kids, which is most um, wants the <laughs> best for their kids and they're exploring. And uh, it's so encouraging and refreshing to say, you know, here are these resources. Yes. There are people who have expertise and there's uh, their quality resources. They're really well thought through and produced and delivered for ease and through all the main channels that are out there. Um, and, but you don't, yeah, no one in the network is pretending to be a perfect parent either. <laughs> and, no. and we're, we're in this together and it, it's a linking of arms. So if you're listening today and, and that's you, where you're exploring resources that are faith-based through Christian parenting, through living wholehearted, so on and so forth, we hope that you will continue to explore, to reach out. And there isn't pressure. It's an invitation and we do care from a, a heartbeat to want to equip you as parents, as we are also continuing to be equipped. Yeah. And Steph, I just, I would invite you to leave our listeners with maybe one last word of encouragement before you do that. I just want to say also, Christian parenting, one of the things I think you and I and Jeff were drawn to about this organization is really that root of grace. So much of Christian parenting resources can often, not Christian parenting, the organization, but resources for (laughs) Christian parents often can be performance-based oriented. Like Mm -hmm. if you do these five things and you will have this amazing child who loves Jesus the rest of their life, who doesn't harm anyone out there. And um, and so the the being able to recognize that's not the message of our faith. Mm -hmm. Um, And that the message of our faith is that we're broken. We need Jesus. And he uses us as vessels, even in our homes. So speak to one last word of encouragement to the parents who are listening um, or those who are walking alongside youth out there in the world. Um, What do you want to say to them? Yeah, I would just say that you are doing a great job. You know, the God, God who created the entire universe, every single part of the world, he created you 
to be the parent of your child. And this was no accident. Like you're, you are created for your child. Like you were meant to be together and God did that purposefully and beautifully and wonderfully. And your job, again, we keep saying this, but it has to be emphasized more and more. Your job is not to be perfect. Your job is not to do everything that it seems like everybody else is doing. Your job is to be exactly who God created you to be, to be faithful to his assignment for your life, to love your kids and to point them to Jesus. And like you said, my guess is that you're, if you're listening to this podcast, you're really invested in your kids. Like you are really invested in growing your family and strengthening your family and your kids see that and God sees that. Just keep doing what you're doing and leaning into Jesus because he goes before you in everything you do, including mostly always parenting too. Mm, I love it. And I just, I feel really led to speak to you. I'm going to call it mom guilt, but I think that dads have guilt too. It just, it just Mm. comes out different. But I was just speaking to a group of 10 female leaders out in the community or in their workspaces. They have titles of leadership and are, but we were all talking about how we can't balance it all and feeling this mommy guilt of like, yeah, I'm, I'm really not doing so great at work and I'm not doing so great at home right now with my kids. And I found myself saying out loud with the prompting of the Holy Spirit, speaking to myself as well, that when we are feeling that guilt or conviction sometimes, the best thing to do is just go to our people and ask them connect with them to say, hey, what do you need right now? Mm-hmm. With each little child, with your spouse, and even in your own soul with that examination prayer. But being able to do the check-in and have the conversations is part of having healthy, grace-filled relationships. And then doing the thing, like if you know, one of my daughters would probably just say, hey, mom, I just need you to have you know a little extra time with you at night before bed, instead of just saying goodnight because you're tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> And that being an opportunity. And then I can see that being a moment of being able to pray together and asking God for help at that moment to to draw um, our hearts back together. So I just felt led to really speak that because so many of us are walking around with this guilt. And so I hope you heard a lot of grace today from Steph. So leave us with one last, how do people find Christian parenting and find you if they're interested in learning more from you in your own podcast? I would love to piggyback off of what you just said for one minute, because I think that there's so much wisdom in what you just said. Um, I'm working full-time for the first time in 10 years. And so there's been a lot of change in our family. And we've done a lot of those conversations of what do you need from me? And there have been some tears at bedtime all of a sudden where I'm like, why are are you crying? What is happening? Like you're gone all the time. Because I had to travel a little, quite a bit at first. Um, So it was, what do you need from me? And my kids just said, you know, we used to do monthly dates and we don't do those anymore. And we haven't done them for a while. Can we start those again? And so we started those. And sometimes it's been hard to have the conversation of, you know, I'm working now. And so I have to miss this thing that I normally could have gone to, but how can I make that up for you? What else can we do to have a special connecting moment? Because this one isn't going to work. And that's the reality of what situation we're in and the choice that we've made for me to go back to work. But what else can we do to connect? Because there are so many different ways to connect with your kids and it can look a little bit different and you can do what's on their heart and that can relieve so much of the guilt. And so I just really love that you said that because I think we need that reminder all of the time. Mm, I love that. Thank you for adding that one last piece. So, okay. I know that people are going, I want to know more from Steph. She's full (laughs) of wisdom and just a gift uh, to the Christian parenting community. Where can people find you? Yeah, so you can find Christian Parenting is christianparenting.org. We're on Facebook, Christian Parenting. Our social media on Instagram is christianparenting underscore org. Um, my other ministry, Raising Prayerful Kids, is raisingprayerfulkids.com. And that one on Instagram is at raisingprayerfulkids. And then you can listen to my podcast, which is the Christian Parenting Podcast. And then my own personal Instagram is at Steph Thurley. Wonderful. And have then my book is China. everywhere. <laughs> yes. I love it. Well, if you want to keep finding out about ongoing resources with our partnerships with Christian Parenting or all the other things that we're doing with Living Wholehearted or Courageous Girls, you can sign up for our monthly newsletters. So visit livingwholehearted.com. We've got a bunch of freebies um, for you and you can um, sign up there. 
or you can go to Courageous Girls. And at all those resources, you learn about our Dear Matson's parenting series. You learn about our courses for raising confident daughters and our partnership with Christian Parenting. And anytime we're doing speaking or there's events, you can find that out there. But go to christianparenting.org and be a part of their resources. One of the things about being a confident leader, confident parent, a confident daughter of the King or a son of the King is knowing how to get help and ask for help and leaning into other wisdom. I mean, that's what confident Amen. people do. So that's what we all need. And uh, to be a part of this network of a lot of wisdom and resources. So thank you, Steph, for your time today. Thanks, Steph. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. This podcast is powered by Living Wholehearted, Courageous Girls, and the Christian Parenting Podcast Network. Thank you for joining us in this critical movement of shrinking our integrity gaps between what we preach and live.